welcome to Student Voice. I'm Joel Sawyer, and college students these days are bombarded with assignments, financial aid, campus activities, career choices, and on top of all that, a global pandemic. This past year, in order to help students on their educational journey, academic advisors are here to make sense of it all. Joining us today to discuss academic advising are Kelly Graves, Vicki Duncan, and Brandon Hines. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's really exciting to be able to be here and talk to you and talk with the students. And I know, and meet in person for once. Huh? Yes, in person. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. I have really missed seeing students in person. I know. We've, we've missed y'all, too. <laughs> so let's get into the questions. So how do you explain to people what you do to help students? Um, for me, it's, it's pretty simple, just whatever they need help with, you know, like I try to find resources for them, uh, help them with academics, and just provide an ear, you know, I just listen to them and see what they need, because a lot of times we all just need to be heard and uh, have a sounding board with some uh, resources available to share. Vicki and Brandon, you guys have anything to add? What we really try to do also is we talk to them about what do they, what's their career path? What do they envision their future? What does it look like? And help them develop the steps to, to make that happen for them. Because I think the clearer the path, the clearer the vision that you have, it's going to be easier to attain that. So. I'm glad you said that, Vicki, because um, a lot of students, um, especially for my division, I'm an advisor for the nursing and allied health division. And a lot of those students um, get kind of confused on whether they need to be TCAT or credit. So as Kelly said as well, that listening aspect is, is really vital in um, making sure they're going to be as successful as possible. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And sometimes too, it's, you know, people think the students think they may need to have a problem to come talk to us, but sometimes they just need to come and say, hey, I aced the math test. I did great. And just to have... Um, a cheerleader, you know, sometimes I'm just cheering for the students as well as trying to help them solve any issues that they may have. That's great. So this month is often referred to as advising month. So what does that mean? Mm, essentially, it's just to bring awareness to advising. You know, to we, in, in the past when students have been on campus, there'll be signs out in the amphitheater and out in the different areas in the cafeteria. And it's really just to remind the students that it is time to get advised, you know, because registration opens uh, the first week of April. So we have a lot of students. So, you know, we need to get the students in. So again, it's more of awareness that, hey, it's time to do this. Yeah, and it's a great way to plan ahead. The sooner you get with your advisor, the better, so you can have the, the next semester look and exactly how you want it to look. Class times, class days, virtual, online. The sooner you get in and talk to your advisor about that, the best. And it's like, I love that we have a month, but I also want to, you know, really reinforce to the students that you can see your advisor anytime. You know, just like Kelly said, don't just come to us with a problem. Share your, your, what's going great with you too. And I would say advising month it's just being proactive. Like they said, just jumping ahead on your plan, making sure you're on plan, on track, and um, just being available for your students. That's great. You know, sometimes it just helps some people so much, you know, just to be like, like you said, the cheerleader and just get out there like, you know, because with COVID now, especially, you can't, mm -hmm. you know, can't always reach out to someone. So it's great that you guys are there for someone to reach out to. Um, so what are some tips that you could give students, like for them to use right now before getting ready for summer and fall? Number one thing, as Vicki and Brandon said as well, is just be proactive. Get with uh, your advisor as soon as possible. You know, if you don't know where your advisor is located, um, a lot of the advisors are virtual. Um, some of us are on campus. Things are changing. We're actually getting a new great office that will be a uh, available to the students. So number one is just make the appointments. If you don't know where to find them, look on your Tiger Web. Um, it'll be on the right hand side on your main page. So that would be, you know, how you could find the advisor. I'm going to defer to Brandon and Vicki for some more tips <laughs> here. 
Well, I like to always say, reflect on what happened this semester and what's going on this semester so that you can plan ahead better for the next semester. Like what's going right this semester? What what did your study time look like? What did um, the hours spent, where did you study? Like reflect on what's working and then plan that for the future semester. Again, that whole just being proactive. I can't yeah. stress that enough. Um, don't wait till the last minute. So, um, try to meet with your advisor. We fill up our appointment slots fill up extremely fast, especially getting ready to go into the um, not some well fall well summer too, but fall as well. So they they fill up really fast. So just um, hopping on the train to meeting with your advisor, figuring out where things are on campus is, is best. I, I really like what Vicky said about reflecting about what's going right. You know, like that's. That's things that uh, we wind up talking about that I, I didn't really have the words to put it in. But that's, that's true, is to really see what went right and what you could improve on and how you could spend your time better um, and organize more. So. Mm -hmm. so when the student finally decides to meet with you all, I know you kind of said some of the things you talk about. What, but what advice do you generally give your students? It really depends on the individual. Again, it kind of goes back to listening. You got to find out like what I may tell you would be different than I'd tell another student. You know, right. I mean, so I got to find out where where the student is, like where you are, and what do you need to know what I would really talk to them about. One thing I keep saying over and over, I'm hearing myself is about turn on your camera when you can, be present, because you see yourself being successful. It's a way to, to be engaged. Uh, also, professors that want cameras on, it's nice to get to talk and see your faces versus seeing you know your name on the screen. So I wind up telling them a lot that, uh, about having the camera on just so that they are, they're present, they're there. They can see themselves being successful. Mm -hmm. Excellent point, Kelly. Um, another thing I like to stress to the students is use the resources that we have on campus. They've changed a little bit because of COVID, but we've still got the resources here. They're still available. Um, and people here at Tunnel State want to help. So use the resources. And if you don't know what resources you have, talk to your advisor. And like Kelly said, the biggest thing, it goes back to the very first question you asked. We, we just have to, well, we listen to our students, seeing exactly what they need, and so we can meet them where they are. Because for me, there are some students who, who know exactly what they need to do. So that advising moment is kind of, quote unquote, easy. But then there are some who are first time college students or first generation college students. And so they might need um, a, little, a little bit more help in that area. So. It's just listening. And then the biggest thing, I'm a communicator. And so I have to stress that you have to communicate with me as well as your instructor, as well as anybody else you might need on campus. So communicate what you need and we'll do our best to make sure you get what you need. And definitely with communication, um, sometimes people think that it shows weakness if you're asking for help. And if you say that you need tutoring or whatever, but it is definitely not a weakness. That's actually a strength if you are able to express and communicate what it is you need. Because as Vicki said, the resources here are vast. And that's why we come here. People that work at this school, we are here to help you and the other students. So definitely communicate and utilize the resources. So with that said, is there anything else that you would want to share or um, mention? Um, the main thing would be, please come see me um, via virtually or you know, in person. My students, I, I think I can speak for the other advisors, we want to see you, that's what we're here for. Uh, another thing I would say is if you're 100% sure of what you want to do, fantastic. I would encourage you also to shadow people in that field, talk to the professors, your instructors. They are a wealth of knowledge. So talk to them, talk to them outside of the classroom, find time, be a person with them. Um, and then if you do not have a clue what you wanna do, you're not alone, you are not alone. I did not have a clue what I wanna do. And fortunately I found something that I love um, and that's helping people. It took a while to find that. So um, utilize our career services, you know, um, ask questions, try different things. 
And then the final thing I would say is believe you can do it. Believe you can do it because I can believe you. I believe you can do it. And it just takes time. It takes time and effort, and you have to get the work done. You know, as yeah. you well know, like we couldn't do a TV show if you didn't show up. Right. So you got to show up <laughs> and be present. So that's what I would share. It's a good message. Anything that you guys would like to share on the Zoom there? Well, I just want to reiterate, just see your advisor, talk to your advisor. I've been at Chattanooga State for about 15, 16 years now. And before I was an advisor, I would tout the importance of the relationship with your advisor, advisee, advisor relationship. It's just one that you need to cultivate and really work on because they're going to help, your advisor is going to help you get to your path. And just, it's so important to talk to, keep the conversation going with your advisor. Well, Vicky, I think she stole stole my idea, but it's fine. Um, I was going to say, like, just meet your advisor, build that relationship, um, like Kelly and Vicky saying, that's what we're here for. So build that relationship. It's not always just about advising. If you want to say, hey, Brandon, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? And so we just start that conversation. Um, and also in my office, well, when I was on campus, um, I have little sayings on my calendar or around my office. And so those are just motivational tools that I um, like to leave it with students. One that comes to mind is it's a good day to have a good day. Yes, every day is not going to be a good day, but it's up to you to flip it and and make sure you're going to have a great remainder of your day. So just little things like that to, to just um, let the students know that we are there for them up there. They have our support and yeah. All right. Thank you guys. I think a lot of those things is, is what students need to hear and like just having that reassurance is really helpful to them. Well, that is it for this episode of Student Voice. For more information about advising at Chattanooga State, visit chattanoogastate.edu and click on the Academics and then Advising and Registration. Have a great day.